Okay, so I'm recording. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and we can get started. Um, I'm in a restaurant, so the noise is a bit loud for me, but Jacob assures me the signal to noise ratio is okay. So please let me know if I have to shout. So uh, we're doing charts, yay. So why are we doing charts in GitLab? Um, for a couple of reasons, um, because we want to give insight and analytics to people in a self-serve manner. So in the broader context, um, we have been beefing up our chart ability in terms of like people who know about charting and data and stuff like that. So we have a data team, that, that type of thing. So we have a lot of initiatives at GitLab for charting and analytics and data. Um, but and one of those uh, initiatives is actually doing the analytics inside GitLab itself. So uh, we have a data team, we have Meltano, we have, we're using uh, open source tools, we're using tools like Looker to, to get data and chart for GitLab purposes and, and short-term purposes, um, but for, for our customers and our users and for ourselves long-term, we wanna be able to um, bring data and analytics to users within the product itself uh, so that customers don't have to hook up something separate. So, so it's pretty much aligned with our GitLab strategy and that we want everything inside the product. Um, so that's why, for example, in the monitoring team, um, they already have a bunch of charts and dashboards um, that I should have showed, or I should have pulled up earlier, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't know uh, what to show immediately. But um, suffice it to say, the monitoring team or the monitoring part of GitLab, the product has already a bunch of charts, uh, which is critical for their part uh, of GitLab. And then for other parts of GitLab, it is increasingly relevant as well. And one of those parts is the plan team or the plan side. And so for the plan side, we already have a couple of charts. Um, one of them is within, uh, within the milestone view, we have a burndown chart for milestones. So you can see a burndown chart here. So this is really great. It's within uh, GitLab, the product. Um, it works great, um, but uh, we, we want to do a lot more. We want to uh, give more detail. So even before I joined this call, I was looking at some really cool things that um, like this thing called cumulative flow diagram, which is very similar to a burn up chart, but there's a little bit more information. So I've, I've just been trying to understand how this works and, and create more issues and things like that. So the burn down chart itself, um, if I can find it again, is an existing visualization in GitLab. We want to make it more awesome. And that's one use case of charts on the plan side of the product. Um, and another thing beyond the burn down chart is we want to do maybe burn up charts like I just mentioned. So variations of the burn down chart. So basically any way you can for a team to know the progress of their iteration. So for a burn down chart, which is obvious, you can know that you know, you're not going as fast as you should be. Maybe like this is the linear drop off, right? And you're going too slow here. So there's other visualizations to help you with that. Um, and so you'll notice that burn down chart is within a milestone page. But we have an idea as to bring the burn down chart to the issue board itself, as you can see here. Um, so bringing the burn down chart. So this is an issue board, as you can see. And if you click the word, uh, uh, the button burn down, you would see these, the burn down chart in the board itself already. So you see the board Chrome. So instead of having to go to the milestone page, you can go to the board and you can see burn down chart away. And so if you scope your board to what's relevant to your team in terms of issues and your um, in your sprint, or whatever you call it, then this is an immediate improvement. So I just wanted to give examples of what we're already doing in GitLab in terms of charting, uh, especially relevant to the plan team because I'm, I'm representing the plan team. But you know, the things that we're talking about today are going beyond the plan team, right? Because we're gonna be probably the first users of some of these things or the technologies that we're gonna invent. Um, and, and so I mentioned, for example, the monitoring team is already doing some boards, but likely they will want to refactor some of that. We will want to use the new technology and apply to our existing designs for boards and, and, and uh, get parity in terms of the underlying technology. And then another place where you have uh, visualizations is places like this with contribution analytics, where um, you have information such as this, and also uh, with the something like this, you have this. So all this to me is, if it's not words on a page, if it's not 
if, if it's any type of visualization, data visualization, I, I grouped that into a chart and I think um, at least for the folks that I've talked to on this call previously in, in a, like a pre-meeting about technology solutions, I think you would agree that we want to, you know, harmonize all that at some point in, inside GitLab and have a strategy to do that. So, so that's going to be the topic of today's conversation. So before um, I get to that, I wanted to show one more thing that to, to motivate this discussion, uh, which is a vision that the plan team has is to just bring charts, as I said, right? So we have the burn down chart, as I mentioned, and we have the um, a contribution analytics monitoring. So those are outside plan, but those are existing charts. And then the third or fourth way is just bringing charts in general uh, to the group level. So this is a concept I have here. So right now, bring charts to the group level, I see two, um, two needs for that. So one of them is a need from the engineering side of the house, um, and that's, I would say, represented by, I think Mech is on the call and, and Mark is on the call. And so they're from the quality team, and in addition to doing quality, they've been, I believe, um, uh, uh, been tasked with, let me see, chart showing issues created per month with um, improving our ability to bring engineering type metrics. So engineering performance, like saying things like, uh, how many deliverables did we miss? How many bugs are we creating? Um, so just you know, issue triage, issue hygiene, that type of thing we wanna be able to surface to users, again, inside the product um, really easily. And so our engineering department ourselves have been using tools like Looker, building our custom tools to do that building off of the, our, our GitLab API, but ideally we don't want, um, I, I mean, I see ourselves always being ahead so that we'll always have extra tools, but if we wanna have our customer do this, use this, we want our users to be able to click a button within GitLab. So this is an example of, of that. So I don't think this is a, a really good view. Let me show, I think it was, uh, I think it was this one. So this is a screenshot of what's already marked uh, and team have created, which looks really awesome to me. So this is, uh, you know, GitLab Insights. It's a separate tool, and so you can see things like um, seeing things like bugs by severity and so stuff like that. So you can see how many bugs were created and closed bugs and stuff like that. So this is all information that we have inside GitLab already. We want to expose it via charts. So that's one application of getting charts and data visualizations into GitLab that's driving this work, right? So it's it's engineering type metrics that we would use and our customers would use in terms of uh, per team or per department. Uh, and yet a fourth or fifth, if you're counting, keeping track is uh, what we're calling uh, value stream management. And so we can spend a lot of time talking about it, but um, uh, I don't want to do that and bog down this meeting, but uh, suffice it to say, it's just, a, a, not just, but it's a, it's a new way of thinking about it of GitLab's very similar to idea to production, where you have multiple stages of, uh, of, uh, of GitLab, of, of software development. And uh, let me see if I could find, uh, I think it's this one, if I can find it. So, uh, right, this one has it. So the idea here is that if you have GitLab and you have a board, something like this. And so you have, the first stage might be, um, uh, you have an idea, you have a concept, and, and you wanna share with stakeholders, and then that idea becomes uh, um, you know, a design idea, but you need some design work, and then uh, it becomes ar architecture requirements phase, and it becomes a database requirements phase. So depending on your organization, you might have a lot of pre-work or stages, or sign-offs before you get to even development. <clears throat> and once you have development, there's code review, and then sometimes some teams do code review before QA, some teams do QA after, and then, then some companies have uh, UAT, user acceptance testing, and then you might have beta, alpha, beta, gamma, and then you might, you know, canary, and then it goes to production. So you have all these stages here, and so you wanna quantify that, you wanna say how much time is it taking, and so on and so forth. So within GitLab, we have many ways of doing that, or we've characterized that in some ways, but we haven't really given a customized way to do it yet. And so that's yet another reason why we want to present um, this type of chart here inside our charting uh, uh, customization. So you can see in this particular chart, um, within January, the ready and dev stage on average took, or in February, it took five days, and then 
the in-dev stage took six days and QA took 15 and then seven, and then it improved over time and so on and so forth. So this is just a, a, a sketch of how that could be used uh, from what we so-called a value, managed, value stream management perspective. So let me stop there and take questions and comments and just open discussion before we get to the technology implementation on just various, like if you just have, you want to say like, oh, my team is doing charts or thinking about charts this way and you just want to talk about it for a couple minutes. Let's do that. So any other comments, questions about charts and usage of charts in general? Charter graph. Um, I have a lot to say about that, Pedro, but any other comments on just charting or why we want to have charts in GitLab? Um, I have a quick question. Please. Um, some of the things that you're showing um, look more like static dashboards and um, some of the other things, uh, one of the wireframes was more for kind of a, like a dashboard building flow. Um, I guess ultimately you're probably going to want both things, but is there one that's one or the other that's the priority right now? Is the priority get to get static dashboards or to have like a dashboard builder that, um, so clients can create their own dashboards? Uh, Great question. So I'll answer from a couple of perspectives. So from a uh, perspective, I mean, I'll, I'll play Josh L here, who's not on the call. So Josh Lambert from the monitoring side, PM, they already have existing charts and then they have a vision for dashboards. So they likely will want to do some dashboard work. So I don't know what the priority is there. Is it to, to create a dashboard framework? and then iterate on the charts or clean up the charts first, I have no idea, so that's so, but the answer is yes, we want all of that, as you alluded to, Amelia. And then for all, for all the other things that I mentioned that I care about from the plan perspective, again, I want all of those, but um, I would actually defer to some of the conversations today and the future conversations, say, in the coming weeks to figure out what is the next thing. So you're totally right um, in that I showed you a couple of examples of burn down charts where it wouldn't be a dashboard and so the burn down chart would be, be very local and strategic to the, to the relevant UI and then some other charts maybe it, it shouldn't be local and then maybe we want a, a, a combination of both where you click one thing it, it zips you to the dashboard or maybe you're in a dashboard and it zips you to another part so to me that's not defined yet which is exciting because we need to figure out how that applies um, and also it's, it's at least from the plan side it's pretty greenfield because we just have burn down charts and we pretty much don't have anything else. Monitoring has some charts and then the managed team, which owns the, the contribution analytics, uh, they have a lot more legacy things, uh, but for the plan side, we're pretty greenfield. So, so that's exciting to me because then we can pick which one to do first. Um, so, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, anybody else or before we jump into to additional things? Uh, if not, I'll share one more um, visual, and then I'm going to kick it off to to Jacob and Mark and other folks um, from a more technical perspective. So I just wanted to show, um, dovetail what Amelia said earlier, is that one of my visions of, uh, the, I alluded to this earlier, but I wanted to, uh, I ventured off to talk about sort of use cases, but more, more specifically that the concept I have here in terms of design is that you would go to any group level like say gitlab.org um, and then you would go to some type of charting navigation so maybe one of these things so gitlab.org one of them would be ch a chart or maybe it would be a subset of issues if we do issues only I don't know and then you can create any number of dashboards here so similar to a board uh, uh, design so you can create any number of dashboards and then from each dashboard, you can create any number of charts by clicking add chart. And then um, when you go to add chart, you would get some modal like this to, to pick your favorite chart and you add it. So this is not really rocket science in terms of the design. I just wanted to put it out here on the epic to illustrate at least my initial thoughts. But uh, again, uh, you know, Amelia, how, how we work at GitLab is we what just put stuff on the page. We try to put nice problem statements that make sense, but we also don't shy away with uh, really detailed implementation suggestions because at GitLab, that's how we found success in, in making people think. And, and so um, you should feel like you're not tied down to a des design when you're looking at a designer, but, if you're, uh, uh, but at the same time, if 
somebody proposes a design um, and has good ideas, everybody should evaluate on its merits as well. Um, so that, that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm trying to force the conversation by saying, uh, these are the problems, this is my initial thoughts. Uh, if nobody has additional ideas, we're just gonna run with this. Um, so, you know, people better start generating ideas because if not, we're going to implement this uh, ugly idea. So, so, so that, that's the idea we, we try to um, work at GitLab. Uh, so, if there's no further discussion, um, we had a chat last week with, uh, with Mark. So, Mark, are you on the call, Mark? I think you're on the call, right? Let me scroll down. Yeah, you're on the call. So, Mark and Matt. Yeah, I'm, on, I'm here. Hey, hey, Mark, hey, Mac. Um, so Mark is, is, uh, is going to, last time I checked in with Mark and Mech, Mark is going to be able to help out from a back-end perspective um, because, as I mentioned, Mark and Mech are representing the, the needs of the engineering team. I think their, their goal is to iterate on the thing you see on my screen here and make it more awesome for an engineering department. So, so it's in their interest and their goal to do that. Um, and then I think Mark can help out from a back-end perspective. And then the plan team would probably need to participate from a front end perspective to actually do the front end implementation because we, I don't think we have anybody else to do that. From a design perspective, we have Pedro and Annabelle who are dedicated designers uh, on the plan team and Amelia, I believe you're a dedicated designer for the monitoring team. I think I can only presume that was, uh, you've been assigned there because they need so much of that data visualization work. And so when I asked Sarah, can, can we have Amelia participate here uh, Sarah volunteered Amelia as well, so I, I can see us collaborating closely on, on some of the designs. Whether the chart, uh, the, the next chart that we build is relevant for whichever team, uh, I, I believe the designers, all, all the designers here will, will be involved in some capacity. Um, and then, of course, we have we have Jacob representing Meltano, especially on the front end. So maybe maybe the first step we can do is maybe. Uh, Jacob, explain your vision of how uh, Meltano and front end pieces can be leveraged within GitLab and update everybody from a technical perspective. Okay, that makes sense. I was listening to the whole thing so much and then I was like, oh, I'll just get something to eat. As soon as you said do that, I just like stuffed my face with a pita. Um, okay, so Meltano, as far as everyone here is concerned, is a completely separate entity. Um, and not to be um, mean or anything or whatever, like whatever we do almost like has no bearing on this. It's the idea is that if we create something that uh, you guys can use, or if you tell us what you're doing and we create it and they can, uh, they inter intersect, and great if they don't no big deal you won't use it you know whatever you want to do um, but the way that I'm building the dashboards for Meltano seemed very similar to the way that um, dashboards were being created here and one of the things we're doing for Meltano is to create something that is um, version controlled so version controlled dashboards uh, means that for us, it means that you create a dashboard in, um, in YAML or some sort of format, and then that YAML defines the dashboard. And this was not, uh, so if you've ever used Looker, Looker has the ability to define their dashboards in YAML. So I'm literally just following what Looker's doing with their dashboards, uh, a similar thing, except Looker also allows you to drag and drop. Um, and we're not going to be doing, we may be doing drag and dropping, but it would also have to like incorporate into that version control situation because uh, we, at least on our side, want all of our, our dashboards to be completely version controlled. Um, nothing that necessarily gets saved in a database um, and files that can just be passed around. So um, uh, I've already built the charts uh, for our situation. I didn't build the dashboards yet, like the part that incorporates the YAML, but um, uh, the charts are pretty dynamic and then you can, you know, you can just kind of pass the many old data and it kind of figures out how to uh, do it. I've also got the, uh, the data team that's been helping me out because um, for the data team, they want data in a very specific way and they're really good at saying like, for example, don't use pie charts. You know, they don't, they don't want pie charts. So all of our charts are following the data team's 
um, uh, requirements for uh, data. So yeah, that's what we're doing. We're building uh, a dashboard that uses um, YAML to configure it. Uh, and then you're gonna be able to drag and drop, but it will also like reincorporate it into the source control. So, um, so, so I have a couple of questions, maybe Krishan or Andre could, could answer. So, so we're going to be leveraging a lot of the technologies that Jacob builds. So will there, so we'll, we'll need a lot of work from the front end team to take what Jacob is doing and put it in. Is that, is that the idea? Yeah, it, there is there is one idea. My my question there is more more de I need more details on how things are being built right now because one of the experiences we are having right now is building the um, GitLab UI component um, wrapped component framework, and we're building that as a separate project, which is independent. We can pull that in as a dependency into GitLab CE, uh, and if it's the, if it's that kind of a structure, I think that could eventually be like a joint effort of of being that thing up to date because as you saw when in on victor's uh, mock-ups and, and slides um it had a bunch of things that we're going to need to develop specifically for the, our solution so we would need to also participate in the development of those graphs as well and building on top of what's already there so i don't know uh, jacob right now is it is it a separate repo is it the current repo on on inside just matched with the rest of the Meltano code how is it uh, structured right now separate repo that uh, gets pulled in as an NPM package that you import. Um, okay. What I was going to do, and I didn't, I didn't do this yet, is I was gonna make it so that you don't have to use the YAML to configure it, and it, you, you can also just use the charts. So let's say you're using D3 or you're using Chart.js, it really like almost doesn't matter, because in the end you have like a bar chart. On top of that is another layer which allows you to just very easily incorporate any sort of data and just kind of shove it in, square peg in a round hole sort of thing. Um, and that's kind of what I'm doing because the Meltano data can come in from any data source. It could come from Salesforce, it could come from this. And so I've made it so that you can kind of, like as long as the data um, follows some sort of convention, you know, then we are able to, um, you know, graph it which the graphing does work right now. It's just, it's not, uh, the whole library itself is not completely uh, separate. So, uh, so one thing uh, that I wanted to put forward uh, is that uh, what happens uh, with most of the dashboards, uh, dashboard applications is that uh, the kind of data sets that the backend provides is, isn't exhaustive for the most part because entire rendering happens on the client side. So for example, if you are visualizing data points and rendering bar chart out of say for example 10,000 records uh, then it, it kind of slows down the entire rendering process of the chart so uh, in, in my previous company what we used to do was that on the web we would show the sample size of the data and render the chart based on that sample but we also used to provide a way to download the entire report and uh, that was something that most of the enterprise customers uh, really wanted like they wanted the entire report to be available as a PDF download. And what we did was that instead of uh, screen grabbing the entire chart from the screen and then creating PDF out of it, uh, the entire graph rendering ha used to happen in the back end. And uh, when you, for example, on the UI, when you would click on download as PDF, then it would make, basically make the request. And back end would uh, take out all the data that the back end has to offer and would render the chart using the back end uh, services. And when the file is ready to download, would just serve the file instead of uh, you know show the chart that was uh, appearing on the UI. So that is also something that we might want to do because as uh, Jacob mentioned, like the data source could be anything, and uh, at the same time we may not know how much the size of data would be. So, yeah. The one thing that I'm doing from my side is um, because like we have a like a, literally a text input that asks how many rows you'd like back, and if someone writes ten thousand, what I do is um, I, the, the array could come in as 10,000 uh, rows, but what I do is I, um, I do some like filtering on the data so that when you see it, could you, if you show 10,000, first of all, if you show 10,000 axes labels, then it's just gonna look like a, a line of black. <laughs> so I filter through that and only show like every three or something, depending on the, so I do some, uh, you know, 
D3 has the scale stuff that you can do. So I do something similar to that, but not uh, using D3. Um, that's what I do. Again, yeah, you don't have to use this. Like, it's just something I'm making. I just was mentioning like, hey, we're doing it. If you want to, you can use it. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But I would, I was just thinking like, hey, it looks like we're kind of like duplicating uh, uh, resources here. And, you know, why not be frugal and save money? Uh, but the other thing is, yeah, it, it's in a repo. So um, I don't know what your timeline is for this, because maybe I could get it up to a certain point, uh, like where I want it. And then you could start kind of hacking on it as well and submitting merge requests to it for stuff that you would need. My goal would be to keep it like as ambiguous as possible, like from a charting perspective so that it, so that it can kind of handle any sort of situation. And then maybe you provide something on top of it that, that customizes it, I don't know. So, so, so Jacob, why don't, uh, why don't we uh, talk about a very specific deliverable and maybe then you can tell us that, you know, um, I think it would be great if, if front end team, any front end team can contribute, right? I think, I think you would agree there, right? So then, then you could, you know, review the MRs or whatever. Um, and so before we get to that, I don't think there's anything from the back end perspective we have to talk about. But I don't want to leave Mech and Mark out of the conversation. So, so we are. So I, I, I assume we would have a dedicated backend engineer here because I think Mark is kind of like the use case expert here. And I think it's important that going forward, the quality team doesn't want to maintain charts anymore. We want to be able to configure this inside GitLab, right? All, all the stuff we wrote, translate code into actions instead, and then our customers can use it too. But I think we would need a backend engineer here because like merging data from two, like the, the challenge that we've seen so far is we implemented very bare bones, V0 prototype and VC, right? It's coming from a project level. But what you want to do now is when you do at a group level and merging the data back up at the, at the group level, it's, it's getting hard. So uh, implementing this right off the bat in the GitLab fashion, I would say think of it from the group level from, from what Victor said. And I think we need some, we need new tables because we are doing calculations in a separate database, but everything is driven by REST API. So Mark can help with the strategy and the inputs and the use cases, but I think we would need a dedicated uh, backend engineer. And I, I foresee as having new tables and migrations and all that stuff uh, that, that has to be flushed. Yeah, I think, um, I actually think the backend, there's um, a lot of parts that we can already reuse. Um, I haven't looked into it too much, but we do have um, the concept of finders. Um, and if we're, if we're mapping out um, data at a merge request, Best and uh, an issue level, we do have um, issue finders and merge request finders that handle a lot of the heavy lifting right now. And then, because um, the way that I foresee it is we would use some kind of um, label um, filter like we do for the issue list right now. And then the, uh, the data that's derived from that would be used to um, present the chart. And that... Um, that bar with the filters, with labels and milestones and things like that, that already drives the, um, that's what drives the finders. So um, the information that we've been using mostly on the quality side is, um, is labels, statuses, and um, dates. So things like created dates, closed dates, merge dates, and things like that. Um, so really we'd be looking at picking that data out of the results of the finder that the finder comes up with. Um, so I th think there is already a lot of back end stuff that we can just reuse and then pass that off to the front end. But as um, Kushal said, there's, um, it's sometimes quite intense when you're working with a large data set. So if you're working with 50,000 issues like there are in GitLab CE, then um, there's a lot of crunching there. Uh, to present it in a way that's um, usable by the front end straight away. So um, I think there's going to be a bit of a layer between the finders and uh, the API that's presented to the front end. Thanks, Mark. So, so why don't I propose that we do the simplest thing that I can think of and then, and then maybe Mark 
and and Jacob and Kushal and Andre could could re have that conversation with respect to to this this very specific thing. So I I, I can only guess that dashboarding should be a secondary thing because it doesn't have as much value and you can create a dashboard but if you don't have a chart then it's useless so we need to have a chart first so I propose that the very first chart we, we create is this um, I think it should be at the group level but if it's like totally a lot more actual work fine fine project level um, but then it looks very like if you can squint your eyes here um, it you just have a something like this sorry I, I keep exactly the same thing I don't know what I did um, oh here we go so you can just go to there will be a search bar as usual and then you and it, it can't do anything except filter by like maybe one label I, I don't know what's the easiest thing right but we're definitely not going to support like random search we never you, you can't do all these options you can only do label right and then we'll do one label or two labels whatever is the easiest and then once you support that label or you hit enter then it draws this graph here right and so what it may like not even draw the graph when you hit this page you have to hit enter the label first whatever is easiest and then nothing will be configurable it will be just like by weeks or by months or whatever <coughs> everything will be um, hard-coded into the design as a first iteration um, but we want to do everything quote-unquote correct using Meltano using uh, the, the, the right backend thing so if we do that um, how does it look I think that's um, so the the graphs that we've been building it well the charts that we've been building in um the quality dashboard um the concept of that is uh we use a one filter label or several filter labels which will produce the label set uh sorry the issue set that we're working with and then we also use categorization labels which group the um issues that we find uh into maybe a stack bar or something else like that so I, th I, I immediately think that that would be useful because um, for us um, and the engineering team, we use that for um, categorizing bugs by severity or priority or uh, by team and things like that. So that's immediately useful. And um, it's using the native uh, label functionality. And we've got all the bars, uh, sorry, the... Um, the components to represent um, filtering on labels and things like that, and it's already familiar to the user. Great, thank you, Mark. So, so, so it sounds like this this would be useful immediately. And then, from a backend perspective, is it buildable? Uh, I don't know if that's a word, but like, do, do you see a huge uh, jump difficulty to build this, or is this similar to what you already had in mind? I think it would be possible to utilize the finders that we have um, to, so say we were filtering on plan issues. So we wanted everything that was planned and we then wanted to categorize those by feature proposal and bugs. We would just get all of the plan issues and then the, uh, the chart would just split out the ones with a bug label and the ones with a feature proposal label and then visualize that data. Right. And so, so I, I, when I looked at your GitLab Insights thing, the, the la there wasn't really labels because essentially everything was hard-coded because it's specific to what you want, obviously. So I, I, like we can even do that if we want. I think that would be like not the best user experience, but you, our very first iteration could be like hard-coded bug, and then it would be useless to any GitLab instance that didn't have a label called bug, which is sort of dumb. But it, to me, it's still a super valid first iteration because most people would have the word bug um, so that's a possibility to make it even more like like MVC ish um, but I, I'm thinking like we might as well make a jump to allow you to enter any label um, yeah. Because, yeah so so that's what I'm thinking from both front end and back end perspective like we might as well do that um, Mech, so, you want to say I, so yes so um, I want to say we, we really need somebody from back end because we're we're implementing it from from a black box perspective. So leveraging all the endpoints like all the endpoints that we have. I think if somebody in the back end can if we already have this data and we just need a new endpoint and it solves like hundred lines of code and GitLab insights, we should probably involve a back end person. Because we're kind of working around that, that limitation here. The other thing that I uh, want to highlight here is the confidential issues. Like we, the way we implement it because of security concerns, we don't include we use an anon um, 
user outside of GitLab, so he only sees the public metrics, right? We should uh, do this for confidential issues as well, because those are the stuff that we don't really count for. But since we already built it inside GitLab, we have access to that. You can sanitize security right. through data and names, and you can just, the data can be more, more accurate that way. So, yeah, so, so for confidential issues, like I don't see a huge problem that we, we can just ignore it or we can just do permissions. So whatever is easiest, we, we can do. So I'm not worried about that. So, so are you saying that um, you don't want, you know, I know engineers will say that they can do any, anything and it'll take two days to do, but are you saying you don't want Mark working on this specifically? Um, or, or you do want Mark working on, on like- Mark, 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 Mark is gonna help, but then I don't think we have all the domain knowledge for backend and we need a backend person from plan to help out. Well, what do you, what do you mean? Like, because just from a, like a assigning an issue to somebody to work on, just re, like I'm just talking here project management, like uh, we'll of course have plan folks ready to like review code and stuff like that. Um, but would you be comfortable? I know it sounds weird that I'm talk we're talking about Mark, but Mark on the line. So um, I, I just want to get your take, um, Mech, as, as the engineering manager here. Like, would you have, would you feel comfortable? Because the reason I'm asking is from a project management perspective, um, do we need to have a plan back and engineer assigned to this task uh, to do the development? I, I think I think so. We we, we don't know. We, we don't want to mess up migrations, right? We don't. We haven't. Like the quality team never written a migration before for GitLab.com. So, uh, we, instead of having us like playing around and having review back and forth, I think it's it would be faster if if we assign a dedicated backend engineer to help out. And I mean, Mark will be here to help. I mean, that's that's still one change. Okay. Yep. Yep. That, uh, I hear. Um, okay. I, I mean, I, um, if anything, the front end is probably more bottleneck, anyways. So. Um, so given what you see on the screen, uh, Jacob, is like Meltano ready for that? Can like somebody on the front end side just grab what you have and start developing or, or do they need to contribute to Meltano to even achieve what you see on the screen? Well, we already have Griffs just like that. That's no mm -hmm. problem. Um, yeah, we, we've got plenty of Griffs like that. That's a pretty simple one because it doesn't have any um, it's not a stacked bar graph even, it's just a right, right. bar graph. Yeah, so we have plenty of graphs like that. Um, we have a bar chart component. Mm -hmm. um, I believe right now, uh, Emily from Data wanted all of our bar charts to be um, horizontal because she doesn't believe in vertical bar charts. But oh, uh, wow. I can make oh, it wow. so that- That's you, very opinionated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I can make it so that you can uh, change it to- Well. That's why uh, we have Amelia here. So um, Amelia and Emily will go at it and argue. You guys can duke it out and yeah. do whatever you want. I'll make it so you, I mean, making them be able to switch is not a big deal. Uh, I'll put together, let me see if I can make it, get that, um, that repo uh, a little cleaned up today and make okay. it just, maybe I'll connect with Andre and. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to I'll make show. sure that we're, we're essentially, I can say like ask Andre like, even though we have like, in my opinion, like negative three front end engineers that we need. Um, like if we deem this really important, like we can have a front end engineer to, to work on this, they can work on you as a Meltano representative. And then I will not be pissing off Josh because you will don't be- piss off Josh, man. <laughs> because yeah, we don't want to annoy him and say like, oh no, no, Jacob's supposed to be working on Meltano. He shouldn't be supporting others. And that's totally reasonable, but so I, it, it, what I'm hearing is that Meltano is in a place where it's like, if it's not 100%, it's 99.9% .9 where some an, a front end engineer can take it, run with it. You would of course still be reviewing code, um, but they would- Anything be, you want me to put in. Now, just the one thing I would tell you, which mm -hmm. I had some pushback on, which is fine. You just, <laughs> again, you don't have to use it. It's out there, um, Andre, which is that right now uh, to get uh, an MVP out, we use Chart.js, we did not use D3. Um, right. Just because then I didn't have to, it was really yeah, that's, easy. That's right. So I think my, my, my question is there, I think at this stage, we at least uh, on the front end are still in the questions phase. We don't know the answers, what we're gonna go for and with. Uh, so right now we're gonna gather, uh, we have been gathering feedback from our team and, and like frustrations with the current implementation or what do we want to clean up and what would be the right way forward. So I think right now in this moment, this is the initial call. It would be great to have 
um, a way of exploring the current status of the Montana code and see how it can be uh, supporting our, our way forward. Um, how can we like find a way that it solves both our problems in the deduplicated effort? So we can ha definitely have a look at that. And then also because Tim is not on the call and I would definitely uh, feel more, most comfortable with him like um, being on board and everything. So definitely pass those, uh, as soon as it's ready for us to have a look, Jacob, just send us, send me the link or something and I'll spread it around our, our team to have a look. And so that we can then have more con uh, concrete feedback on, on that, whether that's a, a road ahead or if we, because right now we're, we're currently using D3 on, the, on our side. Yeah. Um, so we might want to evaluate that if uh, Charts.js is able to do everything we need to do it, or if we need a D3, can it also be living in the same Maltano repo? We just switch from one framework to the other, depending on the kind of framework, on the kind of, of chart. So all those are questions that right now we have it's definitely useful to have this visibility on the roadmap, Victor, so, so that we can like look at it and see, especially the VSM graphs, uh, how we would do that on Chart.js, how we would do that on D3, that, that sort of thing. And then we can kind of devise a strategy that will be best for both of us, even if just like Jacob said, is to have two separate roads. Just like, uh, we'll, we're right. definitely gonna have to, to have a look at that. So as soon as it's ready for us to have a look, Jacob, if you wanna clear it up, it's fine. But if you want us to have a look right now, we can like fill in the gaps and, and see where it's headed, but it's definitely uh, we can only start evaluating that once we have visibility on that, and we have a little bit of a more internal discussion which you want to have over the past couple of the next couple of days weeks. Um, so I think the first step is for us to have visibility on that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get it together and I'll send you a link. So yeah, so is it? Shall do one. Do you want to add? On the... Nope. Is it too much to ask? Uh, so Andre, Jacob, like, could, could we have like a um, just a plan in a week to say that um, that we will be using Maltano and then this will be like the technical ideas? Like, it doesn't have to be like a really formal plan, but so so that we can move forward with this. Decision. Um, a week sounds a little bit tight because um, Tim comes back on Wednesday. We're going okay, to have talk to talks. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so maybe two weeks would be better okay. uh, schedule for to have more. Okay. Of a, yeah, yeah I I I'll, a I'll keep you honest. Um, yeah. So I will, I'll remind you next week or something. Let's say two weeks uh, for, so, so let, me, let me make it clear and then I'll, I'll slack everybody at the end, like the deliverables for a front end, which is in two weeks. And then like, like, don't commit to two weeks, Andre, if you can't, right? So, and then if in a week, like, you need to delay it, then delay it. Right? Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't committing in particular. I'm just saying that in a week, I'm definitely sure that we won't have an answer for you. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that, that's my only... Can, can you, can, can I ask you commit to, in two weeks, deliver something? And then let's talk about what that is right now. Or do you, or, okay, let me, I, I should not ask you for timeline before I ask you the scope. So, this is, so I, I think this, what, what I want to know is, is pretty much, you know, from a project management perspective is, you know, like, um, you know, I don't, you know, at the end of the day, I don't care if this is not on right? But I think there was a lot of, uh, um, I think Josh and, you know, Jacob keeps saying he doesn't care, but I think Josh cared a lot. And then I think Jacob cared a lot. So, that we do want to have Maltano being like the technology from a charting perspective inside GitLab and I'd love for us to be like the first team to do it and, and to do a good job of it because I think that's exciting and so so I want that to be a solid decision um, in two weeks so 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 okay so I mean I want a decision to that and I'm you can tell me what the timeline is but I want a decision to say that front and as an organization is saying that we're gonna work together closely with the Maltano team to use that technology to do charting inside GitLab um, and that's, that's going to be like a technology decision that the front end team owns overall. And so, so I want a commitment to that because the reason why I want a commitment to that is so that we can unblock the plan team to do, to do these things. So right. is that, I think, I think, I think it's, it's reasonable. Ask? It's a reasonable to have that sort of an answer, but in the meantime, Jacob, uh, I think we should have a more like technical call between like the front end and, and Maltano just to, to sort out the, what what would a reality where we we were working that way would look like in technical per terms and what would be the process what who would be the maintainers of that repo that sort of thing so that we can like have a concrete process in place but so 
Let me so just see. How, how long see. do you need, Andre? Like, it could be three weeks. You just tell me it's three weeks if you want. Yeah, yeah, because I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to do like a, a debriefing session with Tim this week. We're going to set up technical technical meetings for the next week. Um, so, I, yeah, three weeks is a bit more comfortable, I, I must okay. say. Yeah, no, so let's say, so I'm going to hold you to three weeks. And, you know, like I said, in GitLab, we, we change all the time. Right? Listen. So, so if, I, if I may, Victor, before, before we go on, please, so the quality please. team wears, wears two hats here. One is yeah. the use case driving this if the implementation. The other is the classic quality uh, mm -hmm. drive. It's, I think we should include Rama as well in this when, when, when it starts to come, uh, come down and, and solidified. The other thing I want, I want to see is because um, charts is uh, very visual. So I'm looking forward to see how we can leverage the visual diff that we already implemented in the front end infrastructure. So anything that goes in, in GitLab.com, it has to be thoroughly tested. So I know the front end team already has visual diff on components. Well, let's make it a requirement that any new component that goes into GitLab.com and part, part of this initiative needs to go through that pipeline as well. So, so, so sorry, did you say visual, visual, oh, visual well. diff? Sorry, I, I wasn't here. Yes. yes, so I was talking with Tim and I know we have some visual diff uh, bitmap comparison test already oh, on I see. levels. Okay. And I, I want to see how we can actually incorporate that into this, this effort as well, because that solves the quality debt early on in the pipeline. Let's do it. Right. You don't want that. <laughs> you, wanna, you don't want that, right? That's, that's the idea. You, you, you want to prove right. that. <laughs> right. I, I hear you. OK. Um, yeah. So, uh, so that might make it four, four weeks, Andre. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that because uh, we need to basically look at how GitLab UI is set up to have that. Uh, so that definitely definitely might be a little longer. Um, but to do it right, we definitely should take our times. So even though we should have like interim touch points or, or I'm fine in having a, a, a call in the meantime, just to have like a status update, but the commitment for the answer might, might be more of a four weeks to have a com concrete process on how we're going to have this sort of, right. uh, so thanks for that, Mac. That, that's definitely valuable. I, I don't, I don't want to over engineer either, uh, Andre and Mac. So, so, I'm, I'm not asking for a plan. I'm not asking for like a, like a, a, a it sounds like we're going to go ahead with this. But like, like, so, so like what, what, maybe I, let me ask you this. Why would we not go with this plan of using Maltano? As our no, no, I'm saying we could use, but then like as, as part of that pipeline, when we, right, when right, we right. The Maltano components, it has to be like, there has to be some my, testing validation, yeah, right? So my, my point is that maybe I'm asking Andre the wrong question. Like I'm, I'm asking you, Andre, like in three weeks, I want to know the answer to this. But maybe the answer is already yes. And so within these three weeks, you're actually doing something else. You're not coming up with the answer. You're coming up with a really good engineering plan, which is great, you know, but it doesn't help me um, for, for what I need in terms of next steps. So, so what I need, maybe let me step back and say what I need in terms of next steps is you know, when's the first, um, when can we start building this? So, so for, I'll, I'll tell you, like, you know already, Andre, like how this will impact the plan side because we want to do that TAM analytics chart, right? So in light of this, maybe we don't do that now, which sucks, but if we're going to wait, uh, if we're going to do this other thing instead, so we had a time, we had a, so for everybody else's sake, we had a visualization we wanted to build, which is more in the BSM use case. And that's going to be a little bit harder to to query uh, in terms of the backend stuff because that's all brand new things. So we, I was thinking we won't even do that first, and we do whatever what Mech and Mark wants first, anyways. And because I don't foresee us doing both at the same time. And so, when can we do this? Can we do this in ten point five? Can we do it in ten point ten? Can we do this in eleven point five, or can we do this in eleven point six? So that's that's what I want to know, Andre. So maybe maybe. Well, what should I ask you? Like, should I ask you, um, I think we, I think 11.5 is, I think there's nothing to ask you then, right? So I think what to ask you is like, will this make it for 11.6? Well, the first iteration, because I think 11.5 is too early, right? If, yeah. if, you're, yeah. if you're really telling me it's like, it take three to four weeks to just square up the engineering pieces, then. Yeah, we get, yeah, definitely, definitely too soon, but for 11.6, that's the right question. So, so why don't we do this? Why don't we say that the, the, right now the, the, working, um, uh, the working plan is that for 11.6, plan wants to ship the first iteration of charts using this new technology integration 
and the working plan is the technology team is gonna work together to figure out the plan. And um, right now, plan team is gonna uh, very likely try its best to commit both front end and back end people to work on that first feature. And they're gonna work closely with Jacob and of course testing quality side, Ramya is to support the, all those pieces. Um, but that we have, we have the people committed, I mean like, I'm not committing the people, but I'm committing the priority of plan, and therefore, I hope Andre and Sean could commit people accordingly to support this effort. And it's going to be an 11.6 effort for our very first chart, and that that chart being what I showed you on the screen. And then, um, is, is that is that a good idea? So, so Andre, so then I don't have to give you any deadline, but why not? I, I am giving you a deadline, I'm saying like you have to like. You have to tell me if this is not like if this is not possible for eleven point six. Andre right. has to look at my stuff first. Think, find out if it's legit or not. Right. And Mech has to look at my stuff and find out if it's legit or not. I could be totally bluffing and not have written any charts at all. No one's seen it, so I think the first step is for people to look at the charts that I wrote and then probably make a determination on like I've how long. I've seen your repo. There's words on it. I, there's code. I don't know if it's, it's in front of it's totally code. fake. It's all baloney. <laughs> but I think, I think you, 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 you hit the it's like that's the uncertainty uh, right. that we have a difficulty of committing right now. But once we have yep. that out of the way, then it will be clear for okay. us to get a schedule down, down yeah. to the, down the paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I totally understand. I, I know you, there's uncertainty. And then, and then product managers want to tie people down because they want a plan. So I, I totally understand both, both aspects. And then um, uh, for Amelia, I know we've been ignoring you. Um, so um, what, we don't, what, what I don't want to do is I don't want this to be a reason that you put this you know, in the back burner. And the reason why is that at GitLab, um, things could change in a heartbeat, meaning that we could, if you have this awesome design, like what I showed you looks ugly as hell. Um, and we're also trying to work, like we've talked, like product has talked with Sierra and, and saying like UX actually comes up with two nice sub designs. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt um, because like how nice your design should be and how you work. So we'll talk about that in a second. Maybe we can talk about that offline. But what I wanted to say is that we shouldn't slow down because things could change in a heartbeat because we could come up with something really awesome as, in, that's why I keep saying I want to plan, I want to plan, I want to plan. So I'm going to do my best, best to have a plan and then I'm going to show this to my boss, and then, you know, other people are going to show this to their respective bosses as well. And then if Sid says like we're going to do this because it's super awesome, then he's going to make it happen. So, but if we don't have that as an option for our senior leadership, then they don't have it as an option. Then we can action on it. Then we become like a crappy old company. But we don't want that. We want to be an awesome fast company where, you know, suddenly somebody says I want to do this, and then all our plans change and then everybody at GitLab curses that person who suggested that change, but we're all better for it as a company because we made the change that makes sense from a, you know, like the market a demand perspective. So um, we, we want to be ready for that. So that's why for product and design side of the house, if we can provide these ideas, awesome fun ideas to, to, to our respective bosses and, and you know, share them across the company, then people will get excited and we'll do it right away. So I guess what I'm asking for Amelia from you is just to have maybe just one visual and maybe it's just a couple of words saying like um, how you would design this. So if you feel very strongly that a horizontal bar chart is superior to a vertical bar chart, please design that. Um, but that's what I'm asking of you and then what I'll do is maybe sync up with you and Sarah and Josh and ask um, how that work should be managed. Um, because I don't know how your work is managed right now and I don't want to presume, because especially you're not on the plan team as well. So, but to me, it would be great if you can have that one visual, you know, in the next couple of days, just like this, but like, like and people look at it and understand how it will work inside GitLab. Um, but does that, does that make sense, Amelia? Yeah, it makes sense, but I, I feel like I also need to understand a little bit more about like Meltano and kind of what we get, what we get for free, because uh, I don't think I understand that yet, um, and that will help me understand what we would need to add on or, and all of that stuff, so there's definitely some, some research I need to do on my side, too, to make sure that I sure. understand all of those. Uh, Here's what I'll do. Let me put together the, the repo, 
and then I'll make a call with Andre, Amelia, and Kushal and show you what I got. Right. And then you can decide what to do. And you can go for, from there. Does that sound good? Right. So, so, so Amelia, I, so, so, so I'll leave it at this and I won't push you further. Like, I don't want you to slow down and wait till you know what Maltano can do. Because we're literally asking for, for a bar chart, um, which Jacob said we can do. But at the same time, I, I, you should be doing all those things that you just said. Like you should be understanding what the technology does, blah, blah, blah. So all that makes sense. Um, so, so go ahead and, and use your judgment and make a good, good decision. But um, I'll follow with you out, offline. Um, I'll pull in Sarah and uh, maybe I'll jump in the monitor channel or whatever and figure out what, like, how, how you can work with us uh, specifically so that um, the, like, in terms of work assignment and expectations all that. So that's super clear. Cool. Yeah, we, I don't want to screw up a new person because that's the worst thing in the world. So um, we want to make sure that, that you are equipped with the the work you need to do and you're doing the right thing because um, I'm sure Sarah has a strong opinion on, on what you should be working on. Um, any other let questions? Let me just, yeah, I just want to throw oh, two, two things there. One is that, yeah, I agree that Amelia's work is going to depend heavily on the decision that we end up like making. So yes, Jacob, that's the first step. And the second thing is that since we're doing this and, really, and we want to do this properly, just like Max said, um, one aspect that I would love to see considered once we start designing and thinking of UIs and everything is the mobile view of graphs. Because uh, I think that might be part of the reason why um, Emily from, from the data team does, prefers it vertically. I'm not sure, but um, but we want to think of like narrower screens. How does it, how does it work? Do we turn scroll? your phone, turn your phone oh. to the side. <laughs> Sorry. You can scroll sideways on the phone, right? Like, that's not a problem. Just, just, just Dude, keep that's on swiping left. Have a message that says, go to your computer to look at this. <laughs> you'd be not, surprised that's you'd not surprised. a terrible that 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 is actually a pretty uh pretty okay whatever I'll, I'll let anyway i just wanted to raise that point of awareness but i, I, I thank you thank you you know no you're totally right um uh jeremy has been pulling up stats saying like 10 percent of her traffic is coming from mobile now i'm like you really come on yeah so um so, but you know what, you're, you're totally right you're, you're totally right you're totally right we should do this correctly especially if we're the yeah, the point with statistics is of that is that it, maybe it's it's that's a low number because we haven't given a lot of love to the mobile view. Once we give love to the mobile view, we're going to start even getting larger numbers. So that's why I don't ever like. There's could be amazing innovation there, right? Like like you could go to mobile view, and now I'm talking serious. Like you could like put like show five numbers instead of a chart, right? You can like think of a yeah. It could it could like if it's too small, like the whatever viewport, whatever it's called instead of showing bars you show numbers you show a table view of numbers right there's a million ways to to innovate there so you're totally right that we should um spend some time at least consider that yeah yeah all right so i think we're set on the first on the next steps right so jacob just ping me and i'll, I'll pull in whoever so preferably after wednesday so that team is already here um and yep. then we can get that going awesome thank you and then so last thing i'll just say just everybody just um at this end on the f underscore chart channel I think singular or charts I don't know but uh, we can sync up there and use that as like a sort of a cross collaborate cross team collaboration channel uh, since this is exactly what it is all right um, that's all I had I will put this on YouTube unless somebody said something terrible that they don't want to show to the world anything you can think about it no okay <laughs> um, that's it's it. your chance to just Say something horrible. <laughs> we, we don't really like pie charts. Then people would know. <laughs> we, we, we secretly hate yeah. pie charts at, at GitLab, right? <laughs> well, I, I, I uh, yeah, we can have a, a separate discussion on that. All right, so uh, we, we might be we might be hating vertical bar charts. So uh, I don't know what GitLab's line is on that one. But all right, thank you everybody for the call. This was very helpful for me personally. I will sync up with uh, Amelia on next steps. Uh, but for everybody else, I will look for your uh, great conversations in the future. Cool. All right. Talk to you. Thank you. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.